The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. It's Brandon Clayman from Conscious Commerce. I just want to make sure that you can hear me. If you don't mind using the, um, the chat, because everybody's muted right now, can you see and hear me OK? Just um, let me know if there's one or two of you that like to just add a little chat message in there. I'd really appreciate it. If there's anybody uh, who would like to just let me know that you can hear me, that'd be great. Before I get started, I want to make sure that we're all set up here. OK, good. Perfect. Here we go. Thank you, everybody. OK, we have lots to talk about. I'm recording this webinar. and. Um, for those of you who are existing clients, can request that version or copy uh, for afterwards so you can have this. My pleasure. So it's Brandon Clayman from Conscious Commerce. And I've been presenting um, these events now for several years. And uh, they're just fantastic. There are tons, there's tons of great content. I'm here as your authorized local expert to uh, deliver this content. And today we're going to focus on social media. Um, it's actually social media 102. So we're going to get into a little bit more depth around each of the social networks. And um, I'll, I'll give you a formal agenda in just a minute. Before we dive into everything, I wanted to um, let you know that I just came back from Orlando. And in Orlando, there was an event there called OneCon. And OneCon is a partner conference for constant contact uh, partners and so you know several hundred people show up and they do an annual event and it's very exciting because you get to connect with your peers you can actually see some of the people who um, you've been working with at constant contact there's just uh, it's just awesome to be able to do that so I like to go every year and I wanted to let you guys know that um, while I was there uh, they have an award ceremony and in the award ceremony there's um, three awards that they give away and the first one, uh, the very first award that, they, that it, they've given, it was called the Best um, Integrated Marketing Campaign. And my company won that. You can see the little trophy on the right, or not the trophy, the plaque um, on, the, on the right-hand side. And it was the very first time they've ever issued the, an award like this. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you because I, I feel it was a really good uh, experience and uh, a highlight and a milestone for, for our company at Conscious Commerce. So, there you go. Um, and, and this actual campaign was uh, heavily related to a social campaign. And uh, towards the end of our webinar, I have a special offer for you that is connected to social campaigns. If you are interested in, um, in moving forward, I'll, I'll be more than happy to share that with you towards the end. So um, we made it. We, uh, we got this award. And I just wanted to let you know. So uh, let's just uh, keep moving. Constant Contact is now a platform. And we are um, in the marketplace to work and empower small businesses. I, I've worked uh, for you know as a self-employed entrepreneur now for 20 years, almost 11 years with Conscious Commerce. And um, as the CEO and founder, I'm really passionate about small business. It is Small Business Month in Canada, and uh, there's just it's just exciting. It's amazing when you can work together and create a result that we both want. You know, me as a marketing expert and you guys as the small business owners and, and nonprofits as well. Um, and together, through our partnership, we're able to accomplish some fantastic things. So um, that's what Constant Contact does. It focuses on helping small businesses and nonprofits from around the world. And uh, just wanted to just let you know. So here's our agenda for today. Um, for some of you who are in uh, you know, already starting social media, that's fantastic. You will learn quite a bit of things from me today through this presentation. This is actually a new presentation, and I'll be, I'm delivering this for the very first time today. So if I'm a little bit choppy, just bear with me. 
Um, it's all new content, so I'm going to do my best to, to share that with you with me in the hour that we have together. So um, having said that, here's the agenda. Um, is social media right for my business? How do you create content and how others are using it? We'll look at some next steps, etiquette, and how do you know if it's working? So if you've got any questions at any time throughout this experience we're having together, just use the questions uh, you know, section on your GoToWebinar um, functionality. I'm seeing that there's a few familiar faces here. There's Marianne and Tracy. Um, hi, guys. It's, uh, it's great to see you appearing here. I'm just looking at the list here, if there's anyone else that I'm aware of. And I think Chelsea's here, so that's great. I think we've got uh, uh, a good, good group for us today, so that's awesome. Let's um, keep moving forward here. So we're going to start off with Facebook. Uh, Facebook is definitely by far the most popular social media network. It has over 1.1 billion users, and many small businesses and nonprofits are already using it in their marketing. So if you have prospects and customers, chances are they're already on Facebook. So let's look at this in more depth and detail. Here are some specific stats, and the stats speak, you know, on their own. They're, it's it's really important to to pay attention to the information, especially when you see these types of figures popping up. We don't get our stats you know, from Constant Contact unless it's like email marketing related because we have over 650,000 customers. But you know, here um, we're, we're accessing B2B content marketing companies and other you know, third-party companies that provide us with, uh, with this information. So if you're a business promoting to consumers, um, Businesses that do that are 89% of them are, are already using Facebook. If you're doing B2B marketing, you can see that 81% of businesses are, are online doing that activity. And then if you're not for profit, it's even higher at 91%. So there's already a lot of companies that are using Facebook on a regular basis to do uh, what they do in order to achieve their marketing goals. And uh, so that's just you know really relevant for us if you're you know looking to to get some validation, um, there, there's some proof right there. So how do we know if it's right for your business? Um, there are some realities about Facebook marketing, and there's some practical things to consider. So you need to, to be visible and active to reach your fans, and you have to keep up with the conversations happening on Facebook. You know, you need resources for Facebook marketing. You do need to make some time for it during your week. The amount of time is up to you, and with Facebook marketing, or really all social media marketing, you, you get out of it what you put into it. So um, that's really what it comes down to. So who, things like who's going to run your Facebook page? Is it you or someone on your staff? Um, do you need a dedicated person, or do you not need a dedicated person? There's a, there's a couple of uh, components there with regards to you know, some of those factors when you're moving forward. So when we talk about content around Facebook, Facebook is a low volume, high value network, which means that your frequency should be low in terms of how often you're promoting or adding content. And fans, what they'll do is they get frustrated if they see that a business or a, a, a brand is dominating their news feed. So that's something to be aware of. It's very busy on, so on Facebook um, with that 1.1 1 billion, 1 .1 billion users. Um, they want to see a good mix of content that's being, you know, shown to them. Uh, but every piece of content that you do post um, should be valuable to your audience. So that's really a key component, that what you choose to share with your audience directly needs to have a really um, potent sense of value, okay? In other words, you need to plan ahead. Don't post just to post. You need to be strategic about your content. And we'll show you how to do that later. So here, here are some best practices. We suggest that you post on your Facebook business page around three times a week. And that keeps your relationship with your fans um, in, in check. That means that you've got some good visibility happening and you're not trying to dominate the airwaves, right? You want to stay balanced with what you're communicating. And you want that value being driven. Um, Minimum three times a week, but you can post up to 10 times a week. Um, Facebook, again, is not your, uh, it's sort of an integrated 
um, but not, it's not sort of, it is an integrated social media platform that has a variety of content types. And those content types are, are um, again, we'll get into the details of that, but we just want you to, to understand that it's not just you know, pictures or just text updates or videos, it's everything. And um, it, you know, there's events, there's coupons, there's social campaigns, the list goes on and on. So you want to uh, diversify that type of content, but we'll get into that in more detail. Again, quality versus quantity, okay? That requires planning, it requires um, uh, you know, a very specific content strategy. And each of your businesses have its own unique content strategy and what type of content you'll be using that creates the quality and the impact and the reach that you're going after. So let's talk about some best practices around content. Um, so fortunately, we have a rule of thumb at Constant Contact that we will help you come up with uh, with the right things to talk about on social media. So if you've taken our Getting Started with Social Media webinar, you've seen this before. So this is a refresher for you. 50% of the content you post should be aimed at getting likes, shares, and comments. Okay, that's a really important and relevant stat. So this means that it needs to be entertaining and invite conversation, asking questions, asking for opinions, using images and video, as well as being timely. You know, is there an event or a holiday coming up? So that's really a key component and should be the majority of the content that you guys are sharing and syndicating and curating across your network. The second piece is be useful and informative. So use industry info, hints and tips, and curate content. What we're trying to do here is make it, make it so that um, you present yourselves as an expert in your field. You know, and you stay focused on topic, and that means being relevant. No different than what Google wants us to be when we're trying to increase our search engine optimization footprint. Be relevant. So if you do that stuff correctly, um, then you've earned the right for 20% of your content to be direct calls to action for your business. This doesn't necessarily have to be a buy now button, but you can uh, promote as part of your overall experience with your total content mix, 20% of it can be promotionally driven. Okay, And that's the exciting part for us because when we first look at doing marketing on social media, our first thoughts are, well, you know, how am I going to make money at this? And right there is the answer. 20% of, your, of your, your resource or your commitment or dedication and your content can revolve around social media uh, promotions, campaigns, and sale items that you have. Again, your business will dictate the content type as well, how often you can be doing these types of things. Um, it's a little different for everybody, but this is what we recommend as a best practice. So let's look at some different types of content and keep these best practices in mind when you see you know, these examples. Content types. So you have here uh, text updates. And text updates are really quick um, and an easy way to update your Facebook fans, and you can get some great interaction if you do them right. Here are some examples. Um, basically, fill in the blanks. Here are some uh, fill in the blank posts that you can see. These people are asking questions. And it's making it easier for people to respond and engage the content when you set it up like this. So if you leave it all as like totally open-ended um, or you don't create the context correctly, it, it, it can be a little bit more challenging to get a response. And in social media, response is a really important component to success. It's one of the metrics that really matter for us. You know, when you're putting something out there, um, you know, is it not only being viewed, but is it being engaged? And that's where that response kicks in. So here are a few examples of how you can do that. Like, here's the last one. It says, like it if you love, love it. 67% of all new jobs come from small businesses. So great opportunity to um, you know, encourage. It's a fun fact or a tip. It encourages uh, what we stand for here at Constant Contact, which is small. We're all about small business. So of course we want to be promoting this kind of content. And you can notice that we're not trying to sell anything here. We just simply want to um, just encourage people to engage. And that's part of that 50% uh, as part of the first content mix I was sharing with you. So those are text updates. Then we have some visual content. 
visual content, and by the way, guys, if you, if you hear my voice, I sound a little tired. I've been traveling for three weeks. Um, we went to Costa Rica for my wife and I's 50 year anniversary and my birthday. And then my grandfather passed away in Toronto, uh, which was really, really sad. But he was a big inspiration to me. And he was a small business owner, um, became a self-made millionaire. Uh, in Toronto, uh, he was a dry cleaner. And can you believe it? Doing dry cleaning became a millionaire because he brought the first one-hour dry cleaning uh, business into Canada. And then I went to one con for a week. And tomorrow I'm going to Montreal for a wedding. So it's been a busy month already. I'm sorry if I sound a little tired. I came in late last night. But uh, here I am showing up because I'm dedicated to what I do and I love what I do. So thanks again for being here with me today. Um, back to social media. So we have content types where we have the visual impact on photos. And photos are really, really a driver for um, for anything engageable. Like if you if you look at the stats, there's been other information uh, out there about this. But the more photos and videos you publish and post, the higher propensity we we have for engagement because we are a visual species and we love to see versus um, you know any other kind of form of, uh, of sort of listening or ways of in engagement. So. Here are some examples on the visual side of things. And then we have an editorial calendar, which I think all of you, if you don't have, you should have. If you'd like to um, discuss that with me, I can give you a link to book a call with me. Um, we, can, we can talk about that. It's, not, it's basically claimant.net. That's my last name.net. And it'll take you to an online booking engine to book a call with me for next week. And we can discuss these types of things. And I think that for any size company, don't be scared of these words, editorial calendar. Okay, You're not journalists, but you are content producers. Anytime you send any kind of communication to anyone, anywhere, it should be integrated inside of a content uh, strategy. And that strategy also relates to a calendar. So that's what I do with my clients on a daily basis. And we come up with a very simple plan to help you, not to overwhelm you, but to help you stay focused on getting your content syndicated to your channels. That's it. It's so that you know, okay, at the end of the month, we're going to do, the last week of each month, we're going to do a promotion. Okay, well, there's your 20% of your content strategy. In the first half of the month, we're going to be doing, you know, all these other updates. Uh, the, and then the, so you just, we just basically create the calendar, and then you go to market with it. One of, one of our uh, clients here is Boloco, and they, um, so I'm going to show you sort of how they're doing it. They, they are, they're successful with their Facebook marketing. They are a great example of a chain burrito restaurant in New England. Um, they use a lot of best practices we've talked about today. We've continually used them as, as sort of an example because they're just so good at what they do. So they ask questions for their fans um, all the time, and uh, they get them talking, sharing their opinions. They share multimedia. They take lots of photos and videos about what they do, the information about their products, and, they, and sort of a behind-the-scenes look, charity and community outreach. So they keep their, their fan base busy and engaged with a lot of different content that all relates to their strategy, their content strategy, their marketing plans. You know, I don't want you to look at social media as a separate uh, marketing activity. It, it should be as part of the award that we won, an integrated marketing experience. You don't want it falling outside. You do not really have the resources to do it that way either. Um, and then what happens is you dilute your entire marketing strategy. So you want to keep focused and keep it simple. You know, We're not trying to do everything to everyone. We want to make sure that the, the effort and energy we invest into doing this is going to bring us an ROI. Um, there's also a return on time invested, which stands for ROTI, R-O-T-I, that's something a little bit new, and that's return on time invested. So um, again, when you're looking at a small business world, it, you know, we, we really do wear multiple hats quite often, and it's important to understand that, okay, if I'm using, for example, Constant Contact, and I'm doing a social campaign, I should be expecting a certain result. And that's how I think. When I work with clients, I'm not interested in just making a pretty looking website. We have to make sure that it functions to create the results that we have set forth. That's it. That's how we won that award, because we were able to stay 
on target with um, achieving that level of success. So keep that in mind. Um, here's some more examples how Beloco does what they do. They ask questions, they share multimedia, they try to be resourceful as well um, and, and let the world know um, really what's going on. Social media is fantastic too if you can do behind the scenes stuff because transparency does kick into social media as part of like the communication and usual conversation piece. So again, if you can share a little bit more in depth around sort of the behind the scenes, that would be awesome too. And they involve their fans, and that's Beloco. So um, what, what do you do next with Facebook? I mean, if you're using it for your business, here are some things you can do, or three suggestions. You can try fill-in-the-blank questions or posts. You can create and share visual content, just reiterating some of the examples that I've given you before. And then you can monitor your page. Is your content engaging? And Facebook business pages offer you the ability to see how engaging your content is. They give you the insights component to a business page. And when I say a business page, I am not talking about your personal profile. So how about just out of a show of hands here, um, you can use the webinar technology. How many of you, just through a show of hands, have a business Facebook page? Just let me know if you don't mind. Just by simply um, raising your hand. Thank you very much. That's awesome. So we've got uh, more than half of you. And I, I'm, I'm, I was expecting that. So. That's great. And how many of you, um, if you if you lower your hand, how many? Of, and then I'll ask you just one more question about Facebook. How many of you have tried any one of these three types of content uh, publishes or publishing any type of these one or two or or more or less? Actually, I really want to know is how many of you tried the fill in the blank question post? Um, if you let me know uh, through raising your hand again, that'd be great. You don't. Okay. So that gives you a potentially new opportunity to. Um, to, to mix up the content and see what you know what what level of engagement you get. Um, part of Facebook, you know, again, just to, to finalize with them, Facebook fans uh, are obviously a, a start as a metric, and then you have reach. So it's post reach. That's really another component, and then there's response or engagement. So you know that's where. Um, your actual content is being communicated to from the fan base that you have. So again, really important stuff. Those are the, the main metrics when you look at Facebook marketing uh, and you're using that channel because, again, only 20% is going to be related to an active promotion. And that's important for you to understand. So anybody have any questions around Facebook before I move on? You can ask your questions just simply through the, uh, the, the question box. And uh, if not, I'll just keep moving forward. We've got a few other social networks to, to tap into. Twitter. Let's go back. Let's go to Twitter now. Our, and, and again, out of a show of hands, how many of you have and are using a Twitter account for your business? Sh show, uh, raise your hand if you're using Twitter for your business. I'd really like to know that. Awesome. So. Let's let's get into it a little bit more. So our next social network is Twitter. What makes Twitter stand out from the other social networks? It, uh, it's the it's the fastest moving. When you check out Twitter, you'll see tweets posted in real time, which I love. And there's a lot being posted at a rapid pace. It's become a place to catch breaking news. Twitter has 500 million users, and 400 million tweets are posted daily through Twitter. So there's a lot of engagement on Twitter, and uh, I think there's a lot to to learn from, you know, from that in and of itself is that how, look how much activity is, is occurring in such a simple way because it pre purely is a, a text-based engine. So should you even be using Twitter? Let's, let's look at some of the stats. So when you, when you look at companies um, who are marketing to consumers, well, 80% of them use Twitter. And then B2B, it even increases. So 85% of businesses are using it to promote to other businesses. And then the last piece is on nonprofit, 69%. Still really good. It's not as high as Facebook, but the first two, you can see already the, the trend here is that it's a very solid channel for business engagement. So. Just out of a show of hands here, um, how many of you, uh, if you lower your hand, so then when I ask you another question, I can, I can then 
see clearly who what the response is. How many of you are working for a nonprofit organization? If you don't mind letting me know that, I, I really appreciate it. So, is Twitter right for your business? Um, well, similar to Facebook, you know, you have to have resources to do this, and it doesn't mean you have to, you know, drive and engage every single channel that's out there. But for whatever channels you do decide to work on, you want to make sure that, you know, you you will have the ability to uh, to win. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, by the way, for those who raised their hand. You can lower your hand now until I ask you the next question. So the first one of those, just like Facebook, we talked about that. You need time and energy. Um, we need content curation. For content cur uh, creation and curation, we really need a strong focus there. And monitoring is also more emphasized on Twitter. Because Twitter, um, when you look at how much time you have to put in, or the total amount of time, you do want to make sure that a part of your experience on Twitter is used for monitoring or listening. How many of you listen on Twitter? If you're using it actively, how many of you are actually listening on Twitter? You can raise your hand just to, again, just give me some insight. That's great. Because Twitter is the kind of network that requires, if you really want to win, you have to listen. It's, it's almost 50% of, of the experience. And uh, we call this listening for leads as well, because you can do that. And again, with the, the higher volume of business to business and business to consumer usage, it makes it a lot easier for uh, for us to accomplish that because it's a transparent and open network. It's not like Facebook. Facebook isn't as open as Twitter, and Facebook has a whole variety of different content. Okay, um, and as well with Twitter, you can be using that platform to become a thought leader, and uh, continually. I mean, it's amazing how one tweet can go so far on uh, in the world of media, and how you know, they use these one tweet, it's like a one tweet wonder, when you see um, how it's being quoted on CNN and news channels, and, you know, they look at these thought leaders, and they just, just off of one tweet, it can, it can get such a huge amount of buzz and be exposed to hundreds of millions of people around the world. So, again, uh, it's short and powerful, potent and sweet. That's how I like to look at Twitter. Just like a bird chirping, a little chirp can go a long way. So let's look at some of the content. We want high volume and low value. So because of its openness, um, there's, there's going to be more communication going on. And that's why it's important to listen. Because you're listening for, for value. You're listening to discern where is, what's relevant, along with, obviously, engaging people. So when we were at one con, we were tweeting like crazy, um, sort of like a play-by-play -play of the what's going on in the realm of, of uh, Twitter and, and in one con. So just like looking at a whole, <laughs> if you looked at a whole bunch of um, people just sort of shouting out there all at once, it, it's tough to kind of discern what's, what's important to you. So who you follow is another key component of you know, finding great content. But again, when we look at this, um, overall, we want high volume and low value, minimum five per day, okay? There is no maximum to Twitter. So I've seen people do just an unbelievable amount of tweets in any given day, and uh, nobody seems to be complaining about that. So very fast-paced. Quantity is key because you're, I guess, competing against, you know, four or 500 million people that... Uh, and many of them are active, so there's a lot of lot of competition for the airwaves. Again, if anybody has any questions as we move along here, just go ahead and ask. I'm more than happy to help answer those. I want you to, you know, be part of this with me. So here are some best practices for for Twitter. Create versus curate. So um, curating content. How many of you know what curating content means? You can just use the Q&A or raise your hand. Okay, good, good. Content curation is a key component to um, being successful with um, any social media and content marketing. You know, it's, it's how do you acquire your content or where are you getting it from. It's, the, it's like the process of creation of content and where you procure it, you curate it, 
you syndicate it. There's all these sort of buzzwords that relate to um, the content creation and, and content strategy. So you can see there, there's a um, four tools to help you do this. Social media plus email marketing equals success. And this is a blog. And why social, uh, smart social marketers think global. Again, it, um, uh, it, it says here blog post. And then also curate equals blog post from all Twitter. So there's the Twitter tag. This was the first part is create versus curate. You can see the two. One of them is referencing someone else's content, while the first post is actually creating their own content. We've got a question from Christina. It says, would you consider sharing a post via Facebook as posting in the 3x minimum, 10x maximum frame? Yep, absolutely. As long as that content is something that you want um, others to, like that you're in alignment with it, it's relevant to your business. Uh, sharing content's great as long as uh, you can see the value. Remember, you need high value in Facebook. So. If it's a highly shared and viral post, then it could help boost your visibility as well because you're participating in that. Um, retweets are equal sharing the love. So with Twitter, uh, when somebody retweets your stuff, it helps to save some time too because you know if there's something that's go going out there and uh, why, why do you have to reinvent the wheel? You can just simply retweet a great post. And retweeting is fantastic. It's a really great way to um, share something that's already been done, and it counts as a, as a tweet. And uh, it also honors the people who you are uh, affiliated with. So with Twitter, you, you definitely need to be including other people in your uh, tweets to make sure that they get the credit moving forward. Hashtags are a big component to Twitter marketing as well. Here's an example, 265 motivating quotes for small businesses and then, uh, small business owners. So you can see here that we have um, two hashtags that are being used. And like I said, with Twitter, the nice thing about it is that you can see the actual usage of these hashtags on a regular basis. Um, it gives you uh, like the whole entire conversation around these hashtags. So if you found a hashtag that was really popular, and it's related and relevant to your business, then use them and come up with, they're like key, they're keywords. They're very similar to keywords when you're doing search engine optimization. So you want to find the keywords that are being mostly used and related and relevant to your business. I've got a question that says, why does Twitter have a lower percentage for non, non for profit? I, I think because it requires more resources um, in the sense that you need to be doing more on Twitter on a regular basis, Joan. So it's a good question. Um, there's with Facebook, you can you can also diversify your content mix a lot more by incorporating video and images and photo libraries. Um, of course, with text and questions and there's events. So with Facebook, it, it's it's more relevant to a nonprofit's business model. Whereas with Twitter, um, you'll see nonprofit activity. I mean, it's still 69%. That's a huge number. And that means that 69% of all not-for-profits are using it for their business. But it's higher in Facebook and uh, for those reasons. So at least that's what I believe. So let's talk about hashtags in a little bit more detail. Um, how many of you use hashtags in, in Twitter? You could just give me a raise of hands there. That'd be great. Yeah, they're awesome. They uh, they do help in getting visibility uh, on that channel. So it consists of words or phrases with no spaces. Remember that. Preceded by a hashtag sign that is used to tie various social media posts together and relate them to a topic. And you know what? You'll start to see you already are seeing hashtag usage in Facebook and other social channels. So it's a universal internet marketing. Uh, communication component now. Originally, hashtags were created on Twitter. Now you can see them on Pinterest, Facebook, and Google, Instagram, LinkedIn, and other networks. So it's become this sort of embedded um, standard as part of our communication. So what's the point of using it? It's to help grow uh, group tweets that are
that are part of a conversation around a live event or a certain topic. So by clicking on the hashtag in a social post, that social network will automatically curate and display a feed of other messages also incorporating the same hashtag. Hashtag let you add context to a post and show that it's part of a larger discussion. So that's great in terms of you being an expert on these social channels. If you continually are using the same hashtags over and over again, you'll continually improve your reach and rank inside of Twitter, gaining you more exposure and followers, which is ideal. Ideal. It's one of the metrics in Twitter is followers and retweets as, as two components for sure. Anybody have any questions about hashtags? You don't want them to. Uh, you don't want to abuse them, and you 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 obviously want your your hashtags to make sense. You don't want your entire tweet being a whole bunch of hashtags either, because that just looks spammy, and they can't be huge either. You've got to keep them short and simple as best you can, because with Twitter, you really only have 144 characters uh, to to do an update, whereas with Facebook, you can you have like all day long uh, in your post. You can do whatever you want in there. All right. Um, several people use hashtags on Twitter. Infographic is a very popular one. Photo or video to show people there's a video or a link to multimedia in the tweet, or they're using uh, hashtag Facebook when they're promoting something happening on their other Facebook page. Okay. So um, let's look at some content types further on Twitter. Text updates, posts with a link. Facts, stats, facts, and tips. So here's another example. And then we have quotes. Quotes are great on Twitter because they can go a long way. They help to, um, uh, again, just mix the content up. And it's great for retweets as well. Keeps you in alignment with um, you know, the, t the theme or topic of your business and the area of, of, of Yes, uh, the question, Tina, yes, you can use hashtags on, uh, on Google Plus for sure. Google Plus has, has a lot of uh, sort of functionality on that network as well, probably even more than Facebook. So um, here's some visual content for uh, Twitter. You can see there's, um, here's a question for you guys. How many of you use Vine? How many of you are using Vine as part of Twitter? They recently purchased it. OK. I think Vine's growing. I don't necessarily know a lot about the, the 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 demographics yet. I think that it's it's primarily personal use. I don't see a lot of companies on Vine. Um, it's uh, essentially an, an eight second video. I think it's seven seconds, um, and that's it. It's just if you want to post a Vine, it's seven seconds, and it's sort of an extension of Twitter, um, and Twitter owns Vine. So, good to know. Let's see here. All right. Just give me a second here. Just, there we go. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at the Courier Museum of Art. Um, these guys are on Twitter. You can see their follower base. They've got uh, quite a few. And they are a not-for-profit art museum in New Hampshire, and they've built a successful Twitter following. And here's how they use it. They inform their followers about news um, at the art museum, new exhibits, classes, events, like this image um, of their New Year's Eve party. And um, they inform, uh, they educate by sharing fun facts about the art and artists they exhibit. So that's good, keeping it really relevant. This tweet shares the, um, the term for African symbols in an exhibit. And uh, they retweet other people's museums, artists, and news sources about art in general. And they retweet people who mention them. They also curate content. They tweet and share content from other sources. This tweet links to a video about one of their artists. So you can see uh, what they do there. So what do you do next on Twitter? You tweet at least five times a day, and you share and a curated content, and you retweet or thank a follower. And that's the quickest way to, to, to show appreciation on Twitter, is to thank a follower 
and and that's it. it it's a great feeling to when you're on these social networks because it means you've got a new friend you guys can hang out and then from there you can build and grow your relationship on Twitter even though it's a singular simple simplified network it, it goes a long way in terms of relationships um, uh, and, and as long as you're active then that's how you can continue to grow so just out of a show of hands how many of you today are are hitting that minimum five tweets a day on your channel on your Twitter channel if you, if you want to show uh, put your hashtag or your um, your Twitter handle in the uh, chat or the Q&A go for it I can go out there and follow you guys my Twitter handle is um, right here at concom 94 and I use it primarily for business I don't have a personal Twitter account. Um, with the time that I have, I'd like to just focus on business. Good stuff. Awesome. Look at that. Look at all these people. Good job. I think Twitter is a great opportunity for all of us, and it's the easiest way to gain traction for the least amount invested time, both, I think, in time. Even though it's five tweets a day, that doesn't, it's really not a lot. It all adds up because when you look at the type of content, one of those tweets can be a thank you. Um, one of them could be a retweet. So that's two right there that took you 30 seconds. So, all right. Um, moving on to LinkedIn, and we're not we're not doing uh, Instagram, but I'd like to know out of a show of hands how many of you are uh, using Instagram. Okay. There's just a couple of you. What you guys can do for in the interim um, is go in. If you're not on any of these, like let's say you're only on Twitter and LinkedIn, just go and get your 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 name signed up and set up on all of the other networks. That even though you're not using them now, you'll use them in the future. And if you don't use them in the future, at least you've got your your brand secured. Okay, so it's it's a best practice tip. Um, it doesn't take long. It's not confusing. So just go get them. Have your Instagram handle. Try to get the exact same one you have for Twitter and for Facebook, and keep it all universal so that um, it's easy for everyone to to know where you where you're at. Okay. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is our next social network. It has more than 240 million members. And if you haven't spent too much time on LinkedIn or haven't started using it, LinkedIn is strictly a professional network focused on sharing industry news, tips, and stats, as well as jobs, resumes, and businesses. How many of you do not, by a raise of hands, how many of you do not have a LinkedIn profile? Okay. So that's uh, that's three of you, four of you. Okay. I, the question was how many do not have a LinkedIn profile? So um, LinkedIn has uh, two components to it. There's your profile of you, and then there's your company page very similar to Facebook in that with Facebook you have a personal profile and that's for your friends and your personal family and so on and so forth and then you have your business page and so with LinkedIn everything's business and so you'd have your business professional profile and then you can have a company page on top of that how many of you have a company page on LinkedIn let me see by your show of hands Good job. There's about a third of you. Again, go and get that company page. You may not have to do anything with it today, but go and secure that resource. It's free. 71% of um, businesses on LinkedIn are using it to promote to consumers. Remember, even though it's a business-to-business -business network, there are consumers on there because consumers are employees of companies that have money to spend on your products and services. 91% of, of people use it for B2B marketing, which makes a lot of sense. And you have 53%, so the numbers even go lower for nonprofits. In that 53%, though, don't be surprised if they're using it to hire people. Okay, I, I work, you know, some of our clients are, uh, you know, headhunters, and they use it um, all day long to re recruit and hire people. Well, not-for-profits can easily find their next talent on LinkedIn. So let's keep moving forward here. So if you are doing B2B, how many of you have a show, show of hands are doing uh, B2B? I'll just ask you guys 
these three questions. How many of you are doing B2B marketing, business-to-business -business marketing? It means that your customers are businesses of any size. How many of you are doing B2B marketing? So we've got a half of you are, and now I'm going to lower your hand. How many of you are doing B2C marketing? B2C marketing. So you've got, like Tracy, I know for sure is doing, um, you know, business to consumer because um, you're in healthcare. How many of you are doing B2C marketing? Okay. And then we know, uh, I did ask earlier about the um, consumer or the not-for-profit, but again, if you want to put up your hand again, if you're a not-for-profit, go for it. So if you are or want to be a thought leader on LinkedIn, that's a great opportunity for you to do so. I see a lot of articles coming out every day. And those are usually the two main reasons for going onto LinkedIn. This is low volume, high value. Two posts per week, five max per week. Because think about it. If you're going to do high value, it means you're either coming up with a really cool blog post um, that is like, here are the top, I just did one, here are the top ten webinar tips. And so that's good value because there's a lot of people on LinkedIn that do that. It's B2B marketing. And um, so that blog post I might do one a week. Well, there's your, there's your response there. Um, you, you really need to make sure that, that when you say something on LinkedIn that you recognize it's going to other businesses and other business owners and entrepreneurs and your customers. So it's, um, it's important that you, you stay focused. On, on what type of content you guys are, are curating and, and syndicating. Again, be formal and technical. You can never have enough of that moving forward um, on LinkedIn. Uh, and then that's how you can also grow into becoming a thought leader. Page versus profile, what's the difference here? The examples, so I've showed with you before. There's my friend from Constant Contact. She's a really cool gal. Her name is Kristen. She's the social media manager of Constant Contact. And then the previous deck slide here was that this is their business page. This is a um, uh, just a, a regular business page. So again, it, it's very similar to Facebook, but your profile is different because it relates to you. And you need to make sure that you've completed your entire form. Like when we won the award um, on uh, at Constant Contact, well, of course I'm going to put that on my Facebook profile. Um, or my, my LinkedIn profile, I'm just going to see actually if I can just go there and show you a quick example of mine, um, LinkedIn. I didn't have a lot of time to update the slide deck to show you, you know, what, um, you know, some other examples here. I'm just going to go and see if you guys, so here it is, here's my, it, and it's smart. LinkedIn has some really good functionality in terms of so here's my LinkedIn profile. You can see I've got a professional photo done. Do you guys see my profile? Hopefully. Okay, good. So I've updated. It says award winner for best integrated online marketing campaign. And you can just edit your profile by just hitting the edit button. I'm actually just going to change a word right here and just remove the word online. save a little bit of space, make it easier for people to see what it is. But that's, that's your personal profile. And then you, you have a company page um, under companies. You can either follow companies. Here's our company page. So again, you get different insights. We haven't worked heavily on, on you know, driving this forward um, because I think with LinkedIn, my, where I like to sit is, is on my own profile. So if you guys want to add me to uh, to LinkedIn, just do a search for Brandon Clayman. There should be only one or two of us out there. Um, you'll know who I am based on my picture. And uh, maybe I can just give you my link to, um, to my profile right here. Here we go. I would love to connect with you guys on LinkedIn. Here is my profile. OK, so back to uh, LinkedIn. Company culture, you can add all that to your company page and recommendations, too. It's pretty cool. Content types on LinkedIn. So obviously, you need to have information about who you are. Product updates. If you're using the company page, 
behind the scenes, again, similar to Facebook. If you're recruiting, fantastic channel and platform. So if you're hiring, you can either use LinkedIn's hiring functionality or you can, you can uh, just put a post out there. There's useful information. Blog posts are a great way to get some exposure. Guides, books, e-books, white papers, industry news, things that are related and relevant to your industry. Really good things to focus just primarily on business content. Market Me Suite is a product out there that we are partners with, and uh, they ask lots of questions. They share multimedia. I mean, you why you can integrate existing content um, with uh, within your other channels and just syndicate it to, through LinkedIn. One of the key things that we always like to tell people is um, don't try and reinvent the wheel every single time with your content. Just focus on on reusing and repurposing content, especially in social media, because we do. So if you did, for an example, uh, a blog post on here are the top 10 webinar tips, well, on Twitter, I've got 10, I've got two days of content if I want. That's, I can do post those 10 tips over two days. Or on, on Facebook, I got the whole month pretty much covered almost. Um, well, not with 10, but you get the point. The, the, what I'm trying to get at is that you want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're, you're reusing your content that you've worked very hard on writing and creating so that you get more reach. You can get more exposure. You can get more people actually engaging your content. So what do you do next? You fill out everything on your profile, on both your, per, your business profile and your, your professional profile on LinkedIn, and do a couple of posts a week. We don't ask you much on that channel because it's, it's, it's exclusive to business. So you don't want to um, flood the channels. I'm going to speed up here a little bit, guys, because we are getting to that um, one-hour mark, and I don't want to um, keep you much longer than that. So let's look at Google+. Plus. And these last two networks aren't as popular, so uh, the first three were really important for us to emphasize. Again, here are the stats that I've shown you sort of the, the story here. So a lot less usage on, on uh, Google+, Plus, mainly because it's a new network and it wasn't as creative and original. Um, you know, when you compared it against all the others. So if you are a content creator, you definitely want to be on Google Plus because it's related to Google. You want to get a higher search engine optimization rank, um, and, and this is what you would really be using it for because you want to maintain that relationship with Google. So Google uses this algorithm, and this is, this is it. So if you've got fresh and new content, and if you have people plussing, you know, they call it Google Plus your content, then that gives you instant higher rankings during search. So question to you is, how many of you are content creators, creating regular articles and blog posts and things like that? Just show me by a raise of hand. Okay, great. Um, so then definitely you'll want to get your Google Plus profile. And how many of you have spent any time or any money on SEO? search engine optimization, and what I mean by that is how many of you really taken the time to review your stats on a monthly basis with Google Analytics and have done the, the due diligence to really get a rank on Google? Okay. I didn't expect a lot of you, but it, it's definitely the, the part of business that um, all of us can improve on. So the type of content, you want medium volume with high value with Google Plus, the medium volume, meaning it's simply because there's just not a lot of, um, there's not as many users on it. And Google's tried very hard to like kind of force us into uh, using that platform for, for obvious reasons. So, you know, three posts a week, a minimum, 10 max, similar to Facebook. Keywords equal searchability. So like with Twitter, we use hashtags. With, with Google Plus, we got to use keywords relevant to your business. Got a couple questions in um, um, Google Plus shows up. That's good. Exactly. So what's the difference between search engine optimization and search engine marketing? Uh, good question, Tina. And um, my company is a Google ad agency, and we do search, search engine marketing more than we do search engine optimization because that's where our specialized focus is. So search engine marketing is when you are paying the search um, engine money to get your company marketing on that platform. So if you wanted to um, get a rank on Google, I'll just give you a, a, a quick example here. 
So if I go to um, Google here and do a search for uh, yoga, um, yoga, I'll do this, yoga education classes, um, college. I'm just trying to see if I've got a client that, uh, okay. So we have um, these advertisements. This here would be search engine marketing where you're paying for this. You can see anytime I click on any one of these, here's a, here's, uh, here's a client of ours, Yoga Santosha, great company, good website. Um, they just paid to, to basically get exposure on these networks. Now these guys here, this is, um, this is our. This is actually our client, and they are one of the most popular uh, in Canada. And they didn't have to pay for that. So this is search engine marketing. We've got. You can see we've got them highly ranked. Um, and then there's um, the uh, on the right hand side. This is search engine marketing. Okay. So if you guys were wanting to have me get you ranked uh, within 24 to 48 hours as number one on Google, we would just simply pay them for it, and that's called search engine marketing or SEM. Okay. We run campaigns for clients all the time. Hopefully that gave you a good answer there. Um, so does uh, SEM use Google AdWords? Yes, that's exactly what it uses, Tina. And if you are interested, we can get you set up. Um, we do that all the time. Content types. Oh, out of a, a show of hands, how many of you are okay if I go about 10 minutes over? How many of you still have about 10 minutes of extra time and or want this content? Because I don't want to cut us short. So good. Stay with me and I'll, I'll be able to get us through. Um, as much as we can here. Here are some content types on Google+. Plus. So blog posts, events, industry news, um, content types. We've got multimedia. So Google's good for that. There's lots of opportunity to post all different types of media and forms on there. Uh, we use Google Ads but found we quickly didn't uh, need them as we came up organically to the top of the search. How does that typically take? So Don, um, if you're getting good search uh, engine optimization by, by organic rank, that's one thing. But if you're promoting an active campaign, you're definitely going to want to consider doing search engine marketing because you can control the link in terms of where they go. So if you want to take them to a landing page that is selling something, that's why you would pay Google to drive them explicitly to that page. To me, we call them landing pages. And to the result, you end up getting a higher conversion, more sales. So it makes a lot more sense. By the way, thanks for those who connected with me on LinkedIn. I saw the invitations come through. I'll, uh, I'll accept those quickly. As well, if you want to follow us on, on Twitter, um, here's our, uh, our uh, handle right there. So how are others using um, Google Plus? You can see there's blog posts again. There's uh, provides industry news. So it's similar to LinkedIn. But again, you can post the events because it'll help with getting SEO rank as well. And you've got to be funny on all social channels. Otherwise, there, there's really no point in, in being on social. You need to understand that it's, there, it's, it, we're, these channels are in place for us to have some fun. What do you do next? Share your blog post, post a photo or video, and use keywords that will get you found. And you can just go back into your past and start adding some previous blog posts that were pretty popular. Nothing wrong with doing that. So Pinterest, um, it's sort of a new and up-and-coming network. Uh, well, not new anymore, but it's, it's growing. It has a business component to it. There's advertising. There's business pages. 53% of businesses do use this for consumers. B2B, 34. And then non-for-profit. So the numbers are lower simply because there's just less people on the channel, and it's the newest one. But look at this. Big difference between B2C. So for those of you who are doing marketing to consumers, definitely get yourself a Pinterest page and get started with that. Um, if you have products to sell, great. This is an uh, awesome platform to promote those products. Um, and if you want to promote awareness for your brand, this is where you would do it. Because it's a visual network. It's all designed for photo sharing. And it's meant for high volume and high value. So you can link individual pictures to links to your website, to your products. Five um, to 10 per day is what we're recommending. Quality of images are also important. So realize that you can't just go and put a simple little JPEG image on there. It has to be higher resolution so that when people see them, the quality of your images 
um, are much better. So um, here's some of the other reasons why it's important. Um, what we need to see is 90% of the information transmitted to the brain is visual. So that's why this network was born. Fo uh, photos are liked two times more than text updates. 67% say images are very important in selecting and purchasing a product. So it, it's part and parcel now as part of our normal communication. How many of you are using Pinterest uh, personally? First question, how many of you are on Pinterest personally? Okay. And then how many of you, wow, there's quite a few actually. Good stuff. How many of you are using Pinterest for your business? Impressive. Why don't you guys give me your links? I'll check out your uh, pages. I want to see what you're up to. I know that uh, it's great depending on the type of business you have. You have to look at sort of what makes you most relevant. So products, digital assets, photos and videos, go for it. Pinterest is a great um, network for, for photos. It's, it's primarily um, rich in content, rich in text, or not text, but rich in content. Um, whereas like with Instagram, it's like a one photo here, one photo there, but Pinterest, you can, it's photo albums all day. Curated content's good. You can use uh, infographics. You can still post and do tips and things, but you can do visual tips, visual quotes, like you see on Facebook. Um, here's a practical example of how others are using it, the unique sheep. Um, you can see they pin their products. They do useful pins. This is great. Look at all that knowledge that they're sharing um, with regards to sea glass. So they're doing some product knowledge. Then we have uh, it curates content from other uh, sources, and it tries how-to pins. So there's some good stuff going on. Take some time to play around with it. I wouldn't take it too serious for right now with with business, um, but get yourself your get your pin get your page basically secure your page. So with Pinterest, if you are working on it, create three or four boards to start. That would be a good component. Um, install the pin button on your website. You can also incorporate that into email marketing. You can provide a description um, on your link to your products and pins. So what are some of the next steps around etiquette? Um, you, uh, you need to look at completing your, your page Talk about your talk, don't talk about yourself all the time. Balance self promotion with helpful and entertaining content. Infrequent posting or posting too much is not what we want. We want you to be active, but don't overdo it. Don't ignore your fans. Say uh, thank you. Answer questions. It just needs to be basic engagement at this point. Don't uh, um, you don't have to delete negative comments. But just be helpful. Create uh, or if you if it unless it's something that's very harmful, but you might have to. But just be helpful and create a positive experience. One of the good things about social media is that much of the content that is uh, talked about is positive in nature. Include a comment when sharing. Don't forget to use hashtags on Twitter. You need to look at, in terms of measurement, um, is your content, you know, engagement equals content and frequency of your audience one. So you need to, to measure that and look at the insights and see how much people are actually appreciating that content as you move forward. Um, really key stuff here, guys, looking at your growth of your follower base and just understand that this is a part of regular business marketing and does take some time to do it. So here are some of the things you can go and do. Choose the networks that are right for you. Not all of them, but just choose one or two that you can really get build some traction with. If you want to talk with me, we can, we can, I can do some strategy for you around that. Try the next steps we suggested. Many of you are entitled to a free consult with me every single quarter. We just started a new quarter, so you can go ahead and book that. Um, when you go to my page here, just book the, um, the managed account program call, and uh, we'll be able to spend some time together. I'll record the call, and then we'll, we'll be doing optimizations for you, all inclusive as, as us being your solution provider. Try the next steps. Um, keep track of the audience engagement uh, as part of your you know what you need to do and of course um, for those of you who are aware we do have our managed account program with uh, constant contact so if you are not in this you definitely want it because we give you over two thousand dollars in free services per year um, you can get over to that website and just enroll yourself I will um, 
same, speak with you in a formal uh, opening review call. I just gave you the link for that. And um, how many of you are uh, not using Constant Contact and on this webinar? How many of you are not using Constant Contact? Okay, so Tina and Nicole, thank you for that. Um, Constant Contact just recently launched a product called Toolkit. And uh, it starts at 20 a month, but really the most popular plan is the 45 because it offers everything. And uh, these are all the features. Um, email marketing has been around for 30 years. It'll continue to grow. It is the heart of marketing. Everyone knows that. Social media, all the notices and information that you get is all email-based. So that's how you stay on top of things. And if you would like to get started with, with Constant Contact, great. That's fine. Here's what I have for you guys today. Um, Basically, if you purchase Constant Contact um, for the first time, or if you upgrade to Toolkit, which is something new, so you can take your existing account and upgrade to Toolkit, um, or add social campaigns. It's only 20 bucks if you're on the old version of Constant Contact, but if you're on the $45 a month Toolkit plan, it's already included. You get all the products. That's why we like it. Or if you are using Constant Contact and you designate us as your solution provider and you enroll into our managed account program, I'm going to give you a free basic social campaign setup. So what we'll do for you is we will run and set up a social campaign and update your social media page, basically Facebook, um, and we'll reflect that campaign through that channel, run it for you. This is act something that we sell all the time. I'm going to just give it to you for free. Uh, it's $194 value. And that will be yours as long as you guys decide to move forward with constant contact in any which way that I've just described. So it's either um, buy toolkit. So I'll just give you the link right now. That's it right there. Um, and then if you want to upgrade to uh, toolkit, what you just do is just email me um, toolkit at tc94.com and I can do an upgrade. But you'll have to be enrolled into our managed account program in order for me to gain a credit uh, with Constant Contact. So the other option is just simply enroll into our managed account program if you're not already in there. And um, if you are on the old Constant Contact, we can just simply add social campaigns as long as we are your solution provider. So I've given everybody an opportunity to, to engage this special offer. Um, there's no cost on your part for the actual social campaign. How I won the best integrated online marketing campaign was by using a social campaign. So just to give you some context, we were able to grow the customer's fan base by 30% on one campaign that ran for two weeks. And he had grown his email list by over 75 new email contacts. Um, so we were able to, do, to accomplish that. Um, and it was done in a very short period of time, and now he has all those extra email addresses, plus all the Facebook likes, to continually engage. So how many of you are interested in, in moving forward with me today um, as your number one solution provider with Constant Contact in any capacity that I just mentioned? If you are interested, just do me a favor and use the um, q and I'm the only one who can see that, so I can contact you afterwards and be more than happy to follow up with you. This is a low investment for a high value turnaround. We do these campaigns within three to four business days, and then you, we typically run them for about two weeks. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, otherwise, um, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's webinar. Thank you very much. We did go a few minutes over, but I think it was worth it in the end. And if you have any questions, um, what I'll do is I'll stop the recording right now.